what is up, y'all? It is me, Tasha C. And uh, if y'all been here before, this has been a long time and maybe even surprised to some people that I just popped up three years something later and say, I'm going to review and recap um, a TV series where it's reality, a movie, or something. But anyway, y'all, I'm here. And I'm reviewing the series premiere. I do not know if this is going to be a limited series or if they're going to try the series. But based on what I observed, and I'm not being biased or anything, and looking at a couple articles online, maybe a limited series. I like I said, I don't know what they're going for, but and not by choice being limited. But today, I'm going to talk about review recap the item which stars and is also co-produced, I think, by The Weeknd, slash um, his gov- government is Abel. I'm not going to mispronounce his last name. And he plays one of the main characters. And um, it is, they do have some points that are graphic, that, just to warn you, and maybe in our cringy, but it's not as cringy and as shock value or Oh my God's moments as you expect. You know what I mean? But let's get into it, y'all. Now, we're starting in the beginning. We see this young this young lady, lady, you know, taking pictures, and you know, the photographer is asking for emotions. Give me vulnerable, give me this, give me surprise, give me sexy, give me whatever. And then, even on emotional, she's able to get the war words in. And, um, the, war, the, the you know, the after that, some people in the background are like, you know, let's take a break. She on a cigarette break. And, um, you know, they're getting her ready prepared. And by the way, y'all, just to let y'all know before I finish this, that I have to put this in. This is my third time attempting and learning how to use this soap software. Um, well, just trying to put this up. This is my third time trying it. It was an epic fail. And so I might be a little uh, extra, a little, it might be possibly boring or if not enthusiastic in this review. But, and also, by the way, we, this is June. This is, um, you know, a happy, uh, black history, black music history, black music month, black music history month. Um, it's Juneteenth. There's Happy Father's Day. Congrats to the 2003 graduates who've already graduated or are about to graduate, whether it's, or you you know, in a couple of weeks, a couple of days, and by the end of this year, December, or uh, so forth, or October. You know, just congrats to all the graduates, okay? Um, also, it's Happy Pride Month as well. So, like I said, Happy happy Pride, like Juneteenth. Yeah, I, I Oh, and how can I forget if I can get everything if I can remember Juneteenth Happy Father's Day? Of course, this is because I'm recording this again in the evening time on June 15, 2023. This is Hydronitis Awareness Month, uh, HS, where it's a chronic illness. You can go look it up. Um, I talk about it on my YouTube channel as well, dealing with that. Ugh, a hell of an illness, I'll say that. Okay. But anyway, y'all, because, you know, we are A-ish warriors. If you know somebody, if you are, we should try and find, like I said, that's why this is, okay? But let's get back into the review. I just want to make sure I put that in there. Now, when we find out, I'm going to call her Jaws because that's the nickname. She is a pop star who's basically a lot of has went on her life where she had to postpone, you know, like, doing songs, videos, tours, and so forth, whatever, um, in the background. Now, she's in this red robe, and I will tell y'all, I noticed a lot of things occurred that had something to do with red. Now, even the name comes up when they're taking this first break with doing these photos, which may go, you know, in her album cover and magazines like paper, whatever, and, um, she sits here, um, you know, when she's doing this, and 
Uh, like I said, I didn't notice the robe. It, it was besides being low cut, the you know, part, the, 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 the deep, deep V cut. And her manager, which is, I don't know, I'm about to call him Cram, Chain, is talking to the the record representative, executive producer, represent, regular executive named Nikki. Well, Nikki is a, fi a firework by some of the stuff she says, okay? She is something else, okay? There are zero given when it comes to that lady, okay? When it turns out, because I couldn't tell, couldn't tell to a certain distance, even though I, you know, I was watching the screen through the mobile phone watching this. It's on HBO Max. We're going to stay HBO, even though now it's the Max. Um, on her arm, I'm looking and thinking that that could possibly be an Apple Watch in white, okay? It turns out it's supposed to be the sexy robe is supposed to be reputation of Hollywood, which Chan was talking about to Nikki, like, what are we doing? Are we trying to make this, you know, like sexualizing the whole thing with her being, you know, uh, you know, me, you know, mental illness being sexualized. Make it's like, yes, mental illness is sexy. Now, you know, that is one extreme to another. You know, there's still stigmas and there's still people who, you know, like look at mental illness as like you the devil's child itself. Um, or it's something discussed where mental illness or there's a stick, you know, like there's still stigma. But go and jump to one screen, you're saying mental illness is sexy as heck. And, 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 I, 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 there's no words for that, okay. Um, but anyway, she's talking about even like, yeah, this can be sex. Nikki's saying, yes, it can be sexy. You know, think about you know the boy and the wretch that you know lives in Idaho or Iowa, wherever she was talking about, and you know they see her and they want her and they want to smash her, but they know they can't get to get, get her even if they had the presence to even see her in person. It's basically having this fantasy and making this woman basically vulnerable and the cash cow cha-ching and continue on with that, okay? Because somebody got to pay their bills and stuff and pay for that house, okay? Anyways, we also find out that she has lost her mother at least a year and a half prior to and her mother lived with her. That's the only relative of hers, loved one they mentioned, is her mom, you know? Um, she does have a best friend is, is, and her sister slash assistant that is Leah that stays with her. And, you know, Mara's like, here's your coffee and stuff, blah, 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 and tries to look out back for her. Also, we have Diane, who is actually Johnson's dancer, we've also mentioned. I was originally y'all going to tell all the people's names in here, but like I said, this is the third damn try that I've done this. And I was tired. And so. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm just going by the names that they presented in this. Sh in this sh um, so, right when they're in the middle, um, Destiny, who was also a co um, Joss co manager, comes in to tell them, it was like, uh, let, let me talk to y'all real quick. There, something has linked. Now, it's somebody with some, some revenge corn that rhymes with, with a P word, you know safety measures i'm gonna say revenge corn they got a picture which i want to bring up which one actually one of the funny parts on and off was dealing with um the uh, the live nation representative named andrew and stuff who was trying to get in i don't know if it was trying you know because gaty canoody trying to get her house he didn't have i don't know what the id was done my driver's license a certain stage pass whatever again there he had to google and show the guy the security gated thing like you know let me in i've been in here several times He's talking about it, everybody's talking about it, but they're trying to keep her phone away from Jocelyn originally to find out because they're afraid that she's going to have another psychotic episode and, you know, go off the roof in. That's why everything got postponed because of what had happened. They say, you know, they were talking amongst each other, some of the people like, you know, there's, uh, you know, like she dealt with their things with morphine and her just like, you know, having a breakdown. And um, also around the same time, in between, right before they talk about, which I like to say, Andrew's words, you know, um, what is it, uh, what is it called? Um, um, pop toast or uh, no pop torts, um, glaze or Pillsbury door glaze. Now I'll leave it as that. What you what I'm referring to to place to what it really is, or have you been fan of the classic, um, 
of song called Get Low by Little John and, and I think the Eastside Boys and also the Yin Yang Twins. Huh? There is a song called Get Low. And let's just say, like, oh, ski, ski. Just that's, let's, you can see where I'm saying to, to, to place it on, okay? But, you know, at the same time reporting, there's a guy, I didn't know his name, but he was like this, you know, by this time, when to get off the break and start taking photos besides, you know, the pop, the pop tart glaze that, you know, we're talking about that was on her face in the picture uh, that is leaking around, that's revenge corn. There's this guy at the same time, it's like, no, no, no. Even after they start talking to realize about the pop tart glaze, um, you know, he's like, uh uh-uh, uh, you can't, you can't put this shit on here. No, 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 no. You, you, we go do side boob, this side, you know, maybe a little under boob, whatever, but they are, hey, 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 girls and all, we ain't supposed to be showing nips. Okay, you have to wait for 40 day pass for a, a nudie pass, whatever the heck he kept talking about. And Jim is like, uh, um, no. And even Johnson was like, no, it's my body. It's my place. I'm, I'm allowing, I'm a comfortable body. I want this to be my album and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Thing, right. And, the guy even, you know, keeps explaining to them, no, we can't do this. You, all, you, you just got to wait 48 hours. So Jam even told him, like, look here. Kept explaining to him again. So I'm not about to waste this money I spent on this. You know, I would have to, this would basically throw it away. Throwing money in a, you know, in a sweater, in the, in the toilet and stuff like that. If I listen to your ass. And so this is one guy with some luxurious hair, whatever, right? Comes out, you know, he used one of the many bathrooms that was um in uh Joss's house. He sits there, after he leaves there, and he tricks the guy who, you know, who's like the nudie, uh, the police gang, whatever, stop the nudity or get a pass to use nudity. Um, he told like I said, he like I said, told also other people that was on the staff too about it, like Victor saying. No, we can't do this, blah, 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 or we need a pass, whatever. And so, like I said, he tells him, oh, so Jam was like, you know what? I'll talk to you. Let's go to the bathroom. It's big. And, you know, first, the guy's like, huh? But he's like, you know what? We will go talk. We'll talk about discuss it. So, dun, 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 dun. he pushes him right in there. And the guy who has luxurious hair that already walked by tells him to keep the door locked. You know, he's like, do you want to make five G's? He's like, oh, yeah, sure. Just for three hours. I'm... And that was show eventually when the guy g- g- goes out with her. Imagine. So I don't know if he got his whole five G's back, but he did get a down payment, at least two G's, and he'll get the rest for three hours. So the man, of course, is kept trying to get out. You know, like I said, you know, no slip of the, of the nip police uh, call, uh, 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 a group or whatever he was supposed to be of. But he's like, let me out, blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever, right? And so they got him out with it. But we still got to deal with this issue. At the same time, um, there is a woman by um, Hardy Niff. Um, her name is Talia, who's a Vanity Fair writer. She's also there. But she is um, like a, I think, what's another guy named Benjamin that's also part of her staff? And, of course, Tar- um, Talia went, went to go to talk, I guess, you know, like, I think his name is Benjamin. Like I said, y'all, yeah, her job was public. And I think they went to talk. I think, I don't even know if she tell you went to go talk to somebody. And one of them, either Andrew or Sham, was like, of course I know y'all two would talk to each other, whatever, you know, because um, uh, Talia, I think, is a, uh, um, a T.S. woman, I think. I don't know. But like I said, I love the color of her hair. But yeah, she's here to do the thing. And Talia's up here asking, like, um, does Josh know about this photo she realized that nobody told this lady shit okay um about our um about this photo going around they trying to cover it up that's even you know that's they all talking about you know like there's nothing wrong and of course nikki's crazy tale definitely i mean has no problem saying this okay she was like man that's a little glaze on the face sometimes she was like to get smashed in my head and go for Capitol Records and stuff and, you know, act like nothing happened. <laughs> and go have a meeting and stuff and get put Starbucks later. Um, and Andrew's like, yeah, I know. You know, I used to be smashing you too. I'm, I'm like, oh, okay. But 
But anyway, we still work about this glaze in the face. And, you know, like I said, Jocelyn also has to do a, refer- a rehearsal for this new song post my supposed to be hit. It's basically, I'm a freak. If you want to be me, get on your knees, be bitch, you're going to get a bank account, blah, 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 blah. And her dance has been out there 45 minutes. They got some dancing thing, whatever. So she's changed her clothes out of her, out of her robe into a dancing outfit. The first time she's performing, and like I said, on and off again, they're still talking about what we're going to do about this photo or revenge porn. They're trying to stop it, you know, so anybody who posts this on the darn thing, it will be, you know, be considered because that's really what it is, revenge porn. And, you know, they even ask them later at the same time. It's like, like I said, they keep going back and forth, back and forth. And they even ask, like, well, Leah, did you know, you know, who, who possibly fit? She was like, I don't know who could have been. I mean, it's been in us, so I don't know. How long she's been doing this? It could be possibly a couple mechanism, you know, already being um in the field, whatever, and you know, because it's been at least three times mentioned about the passing of her mother's um a passing of her mom, and you know, every other scene that she's in, almost she's smoking a cigarette, and it just seems like that maybe you know, and also she takes an alcohol too. That may be why she goes to these things and even probably down to sex and a little bit sometimes extreme, which I'll talk about later, to, to deal, to cope. And we're talking about maybe it was a sexy, but did anybody mention, or I, I know if y'all watched it already, there's no mention about her actually getting help. Did she actually get help for this stuff? Okay. And that may explain how she ends up with a sleazy Trejo's character, Trejo's character, um, later on, okay, so they finally tell her about what's going on after she did, because the first time she tried to dance, it seemed like she was about to fall out, she seemed out of it, so they tell her, I think Darlene or someone else told her to take a break, and then, you know, he's finally able to dance, um, the routine, um, to the song, and after she finished dancing, whatever, they finally mentioned and showed her picture with the glaze on her face, and she basically, you know, uh, I think definitely, definitely, of course, just like she was the one who got the picture, was the same one who had showed her, even though most of the staff and people were there, and she was like, it could have been worse and stuff, and they explained, like, you know, we're trying to get this done, and, you know, just straight now, whatever, so forth, so, like I said, um, you know, I guess she deals with that, but she ends up going to the sauna with um what then is already there, and she was told about you know what you remember when you were telling me about this club, so they decide you know they're gonna go and go and hang out and stuff like that, right? Um, they go to this club and like this thing with the red, you got the red robe, you got everything, even at the end title. Oh, by the way, I think they already showed, like, some reference. I don't know, like, Nikki was saying, like, you know, we get this straight now, like, the American black person she brought up, and somebody else brought assignment Simon Biles to her question. I hope I'm saying that feels. And they had, I know she had some pictures of Prince during, of course, his uh, little red Corvette area, purple rain area with the coats. You know, I don't know if it was specific uh, um, references. What was that movie with Sharon Stone? The famous scene um, that they had in there were, uh, no, she's talking to Michael Douglas' character. Um, I maybe not bring it up. I don't feel like looking up. Like I said, y'all, <laughs> this is a lot right here. But yeah, so they're going out to this club, and this is what I'm saying. It's something about the color red. Maybe this is supposed to be a sweet entry to hell, one of their rooms in hell. Because even when you go in there, you know, Trados, but this is when we finally get introduced to Weekend's character, uh, Trados, Tedros, or Tedros, and they're playing just like the prayer by Madonna song, which was also controversial just along and when it came out. And then it had the model slash actress, the scene, um, town, town extraordinaire, Leon, who was playing, you know, the character role, including a black Jesus that hugs and make it, 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 it's just, you know, hugs from Madonna, but, you know, it's just, it was a lot, but he was like, this is your church, everyone. We're here to love. We're here to smash. But like I said, the whole lighting was mostly red, you know, and um, 
we even had to, I don't know if it made a significance to show the back of somebody's, a man's bald head that says life is war, I think, or love is war. But, you know, they're already in there. Link, Link was already trying to be making sure to be on the safe side to look out for her girl. You know, um, she's trying to get some agua and stuff. And the woman's taking her time getting it. But when um, they, I guess, like, once Tedros noticed um, that, you know, the star, the pop idol is there, he's just like, you know, oh, my gosh, look, he's here. Is that who I think it is? I must come to you and dance and, you know, come and dance with you. And then, you know, because he already told everybody one shot is on, is on him, you know. And he goes to her and looks like, can you hurry up with the water? My tenor is still talking about hope. Oh, hurry up. And while he's with um, Josh, where he's able to dance with her and he started to do so like, you know, you know, you fit so lovely in my arms and everything. Ugh, that talk. And they go have a drink. I notice he's looking at some of his henchmen or, you know, based on Wikipedia, say some of his cult, some of his cult members. One, I did not know, uh, y'all, I'm still waiting for my classes. I have lost them right now. So, it probably, hopefully, by this week or no later next week, Dick Valentine's come out. So, that's another story for another day. <laughs> so, anyways, the guy, Moses, he, Moses, some, he is talented as heck. His name is Isaac. And, like I said, they all look at each other where he's giving these two particular men the eye. And looking at Lena, I guess, to make sure she doesn't, like, interrupt him trying to get close to Josh. And, um, you know, I was kind of concerned at first because when, you know, they have a drink, so I'm like, I hope they don't be about the drug, Josh. And Lena, they, you know, the distracted the way they were eyeing. He was giving them the nod and stuff. And they were looking, looking at him like, oh, hell no. I want to be edgy, but I don't want, uh, this ain't, mm-mm, what, what the hell gonna happen? So, they went. Go, you know, he she's in the final some I don't know if an officer room and as red as hell. Like I said, he's letting you giving you a sweet entry to hell, I guess. Look. And um he went and uh, you know, like they talking, he was she's like, Is this your club? Yes, this is my you know, this is mine, blah blah blah. And they start to make out there, okay, you know. And but I'm surprised it didn't have tried to have, you know, smash there, because they end up trying to smash where, where one of the exit stairs are when you know on the stairs and she's like i never smashed anybody with a rat tail which like i said it's part cars of rat tails it's the title of this particular thing. and Luke's all looking around for her stuff but she able to hide and you know not show you know herself whatever and so you know they would hide and they just end up talking and you know they just talk a little bit about things that really was not worth remembering, but basically convinced her, like, you know, like, you know, how she just, you know, trying to do, like, just some introduction. I mean, they went from smashing to, like, talking where she felt comfortable enough, like, oh, okay, I'm going to buy it in my house the next day, okay, or wherever the heck it was. So, Leela, but when she was trying to distract, you know, to be distracting was Moses Isaac character, you know, do you want to dance? And she's like, well, uh, uh, okay, I'll take it to yet. So he started dancing with her. And if they smashed that, if, if, um, what's his name, Weekend and, um, Josh do end up having sex, we don't see anything. Um, so Josh, which they made sure, because of the, uh, the, uh, with her dress being as, as, as see through and all this other stuff, what happened was she goes down right to her couch. And she decides, this is the part that's even cringe. She decides at the same time, she's choking while jillying, which is the opposite of Jack, you know what I'm saying? But she's choking while jillying. She's choking herself while jillying. I'm like, what the heck? What? Huh? <laughs> you know, and so you got to. Maybe that's why you read some of the years because they were talking about this was torture, but uh, this was torture corn because it's just like, what the hell is this? And then you dealing with her choking until you know she happy, I guess. Next, I think the next day, uh, Talia comes back in to do an interview with her, 
And sometimes she would stop the button that she didn't want to punch. But she was saying, like, you know, you're an awesome, you're a wonderful person. And, you know, and she also asked about her mom as well. This is the second time her mom was brought up. And, you know, but she's, like I said, doing the interviews, kind of like a come up thing. And, but one of the things that stood out towards the thing that she, um, towards the end of this interview, was she asked her, well, who do you, you know, were you, who do you look up to? Who do you, no, who do you answer? And surprisingly, John says, God. And Tally was like, oh, okay. But it's interesting because it's like, uh, um, okay, never mind. I, not, not to say a person just because I'm, um, a person believes in God mean they got to sit here and be Bible thumping and knocking people over Bible or anything like that. It was just interesting that she, um, a brought up God and just was like, okay, well, <laughs> next scene. But it it was, you know, it was kind of like a lot of slow moments in this show. Like I said, even though with Andrew, especially when Andrew got there, and thinking, I thought that was a little bit entertaining. But anyway, so let's get to the last thing, uh, last part. <sighs> so when, when was uh, Leah, Leah asked her, you know, like about the guy because she wants Trey to listen to the song and come over and stuff. Like I said, she already talked really earlier that day to watching a clip of Sharon Stone and I still and that Mike Douglas famous movie that I don't know why I can't remember the title of it. But she feels like this song is not her. That's really why she doesn't like the song because it's not really her. It's kind of superficial. Like in order to see this freak, you gotta get show me that bank account of bank account but it could be be worth something, not no negative or anything. And her friend's like, of course, uh, uh Leo's Layla's like of course, it's not going to, it's going to sound weird because you're talking it out. It's a good song. But Josh, with, you know, with everything she's going, she still is like, I don't like it. And so she invites her, it's open. And, you know, he comes through the door, the open gate with his long, uh, I don't know, it was leather, but long black print, everything black. And, um, he, you know, I don't know if he got a car, a Lyft, Uber drive, one of his um, me- uh, uh, um cult members uh, dropped him off. Because, you, of course, you don't know that he's going to, but there is some creepiness involved. So, Lay opens the door to let him in um, anyway. And um, he first thing he does is, like, when handshake, he goes to hug her. Then she lets him know that um that Josh is getting ready. And, like, you, you all right, you can, you can have some, you can have this, you can have that, whatever. He's like, oh. Door. So, you know, she got a big, big night before he's getting, you know, start, starting to sip, sip on some type of white liquor. He goes into one of her other bathrooms and, you know, he got him a scooper for, you know, for some nose candy they sniffed on. And he's reciting like, what he's going to say to her. I think he says, You're going to be an angel. You're my angel or something like that. And he sits down and he smells the pillow. I guess the sniff her hair of her body was on, on, on the same couch where she was, you know, choking and jilling, and, you know, the day before and, you know, stuff. But he's just sniffing it. I don't know if he was trying to see whether she, you know, uses Tresemme or, you know, uh, Tresemme or whatever, but, um, I'm, but he, you know, was waiting on her. So she finally comes down in that same red robe, silk robe and some stockings, but kind of dressing the same as she was for the shoot. And um, I don't know if there's anything significant about that particular robe that she likes about it or not. You know, I don't know if they'll get into it. But anyways, so they drink or whatever quite a bit. And oh, I forgot to mention, when Josh was slating on that trade, uh, Tato's was going to come over, she was like, that dude is a creep. And she's like, I know he's an asshole, but she figures like, at least she knows he's an asshole. So that means there's most likely, she, you know, he'll tell her the truth and stuff. And yeah, he's creepy and he's kind of, you know, sit there probably, you know, gives the vibes of, you know, being, you know, a butt naked and under tan, cringe coat, something like that. But you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, I like that about him. Look, mean G. Anyway, so after they're drinking and stuff like that, they decide to go downstairs to somewhere where she has a studio. And he's listening to the song. And just like a lot of other people are saying, like, this is okay. What is wrong with the song? And she just says she doesn't like it. It's a super And again, here comes the thing about, you know, 
um, did your mother live here or something referring to about your like your mother's this is the first time you know you saying since your mother passed and stuff like that or song you recorded since your mother passed and then you know he's has the ice you know, the cup and the ice beats up because she's putting so rubbed down the neck and oh, nope, open on her body and blah 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 and then this part where is that what he talked about he discussed, like, the only thing I don't like about the song is I don't believe you. She's like, you don't believe me. And he's like, yeah, you say you're a freak, right? But this, when you sing the song, it doesn't sound like you're one, okay? Basically saying like she's pretending the part. You don't sound like you know how to smash good. You don't sound like you can't put down, you know, you know, put it down like you're supposed to. You claim that you won't. Then, you know, besides using the ice cube and doing the same thing now with the ice cube that he did all snuggly, all rubbing all the ice cube all on top, you know, the whole body and you know, painting and other stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, when Donna Sumner sings, oh, by the way, he didn't mention Prince, like, what's wrong with being different, like Princess or something like that thing. But anyway, but he wanted to mention, when Donna Sumner sings, you knew when she sang, she knew how to scout. You, you know, basically trying to say, she's, you know, Joss was like, I don't know how to do that. And he was like, okay, do you sing sitting down? And she's like, yeah. So he tells her to stand upright. And here's a little significance. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking for far to it to it. So here with a red robe, he takes her bed off. I mean, a belt. I said bread. I meant to say belt of the robe. And he's like, trust me, you know, if you want to know how to sing, I give you, if you want to know how to sing, okay. So, honestly, I don't know whether it was smashing, but it was still, I guess, like some type of, I don't know what the hell was happening. Because I couldn't tell. All I know this is part personally me that I felt cringe. So, first, he wraps the robe, you know, we're almost like hiding her face as if, you know, she, you know, like, kind of, it looks hooded like a little red riding hood or something and he's just looking like and you know he's a big bad wolf with rat tail he like um you know um you just gotta trust me blah blah that type of talk wow so all of a sudden y'all he puts covers her whole face and it could be because she might be you know a little bit incoherent i don't know how much liquor or you know she could take before for that because she ain't fighting enough and this dude put cover up. You don't know if he was going to smuggle, take her out, whatever. He's like, put the, um, the, the, the robe completely all over her face and cover her whole face up. You know, circulation. Can she breathe? She can't see shit. Okay. So, he takes the belt and actually puts her on her neck. So, he's, I guess, what's supposed to be exotic strangle. <laughs> I know some people that that in the stuff where they'll you know they'll trip with when they smash the stuff, but it's just that I, I I don't know it. And then he's like, "You trust me?" Like I said, I don't know whether it was smashed up, but because the focus was on this strangulation, that once he finished or whatever, I don't know. Like I said, if he was you know in her or besides drugging it out, but when he fin, he was like, "Trust me," and he's like, "Open your mouth," and then we see a knife, a knife. Pocket knife, but as sharp as hell, because he just was able to uh, perfectly cut. And you know, you just see her breathing through a hole that he made in with this red, uh, red of uh, silk robe. And he's like, "Now you can see." And then it cuts up, cuts to the credits with the red words with XWs and everything. Um, tell you the truth, it wasn't a shocking. The only reason why I will say one of the main reasons why I could probably watch it more is like I wonder will it get better because you know not sometimes good shows don't always have the best pilots. It didn't you know it didn't like cringe. It may get worse. It may get it may stay the same. Whatever. Where I don't feel uncomfortable like watching it. Like actually, Euphoria was actually more uh, shocking than this at least so far. Still haven't watched season two. But anyway, y'all. I hope y'all like this. Uh, I'm about to get off of here. Hugs and loves. Take care. And what do you think about the show?
Um, it's kind of over exaggerated. Yes, it's, it's kind of like you know, as they say, a little bit torture porn. And but I still want to watch it to see where it goes. Even though I wonder whenever, because I I think they only got six to eight episodes or whatever the case is. You know, is it going to show us that you wanted to have an ending? Because just to let y'all know, y'all, I seen one report. They didn't even make enough, like even make the hundred mil mark as far as people. So we'll just see. But I want to watch to see what is next. Are they going to go into what happened to mom? How he she gets more invested? How how she meets this culprit? What exactly does he have them doing and stuff? It's just it's a lot. How just merge or you know like what's next? Okay. But anyways, y'all, I'm finally out of here. And see y'all on the next one. Y'all take care.